If you're working on designing a new game, then a very common source of inspiration should be other games in the same or similar genres that have done certain things right. For example, if you were the designer of the first Outlast, let's say, then I would think that Amnesia The Dark Descent would be a big inspiration for you as it really helped solidify that exploration in the dark, hiding and avoiding enemies type of gameplay that the Penumbra series started. But when you're looking at a another game for inspiration, it is important to be able to identify what exactly it was that made that game good and what was it that made the game that game. What specifications and what combinations of which aspects made it the experience that people have enjoyed. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing and explaining a tool that is most often used when doing these types of breakdowns, and that is the MDA framework or model. It is something that I've used many times on my own when breaking down games into certain aspects or trying to identify what it was that made them good, and then applying it to my personal game I was working on. I will start by explaining exactly what the framework is, I will break it down into the three parts that it consists of, and at the end I will also touch on how you can use this to improve on whatever game you are working on right now or plan to work on in the future. Anyways, grab your designer hats, get ready to break things down, and let's go. So first of all, the MDA framework, which simply stands for Mechanics, Dynamics and Aesthetics, is a tool that is often used in game design to break games into, well, exactly those three categories. The idea here is that if you're able to identify the aesthetics or what emotional response the game elicits from the player, you will be able to break it down into the dynamics, and from there you will be able to get to the mechanics and vice versa. By breaking any game down like this, you're basically able to take whichever parts of it you liked and whichever parts of it you thought were somewhat lacking and apply them to whatever other project you are working on. The easiest way to tackle this is to simply go category by category. So let's start with mechanics, and these would be the absolute most base component of a game in this framework. We're talking about the rules and the basic actions the game takes upon a button press, all the algorithms and different setups that are going on in the background that control how the game acts and behaves. When boiled down to its simplest form, mechanics can be jumping, walking, running, looking around, or when part of a more complex system, they can be something like an enemy detection meter, or an aim sway when aiming down your sights. Not all mechanics, of course, have to be affected by the player. Some of them simply happen on the background. In Stalker, if you shoot, there is a small chance that the bullets simply bounce around or that your gun might jam. That is also a mechanic, but simply one that the player does not have direct control or can't really interfere with. Now taking these basic components of the game, these basic building blocks, and combining them will create the so-called dynamics, or the higher level, larger construction blocks. In this sense, I really like the definition by Marc LeBlanc in his paper, which proposed the mechanics and dynamics and aesthetics framework, where he says that dynamics are the emergent behavior that arises from gameplay when the mechanics are put into use. I really like this definition because it perfectly describes what a dynamic is. When you take several mechanics and combine them into a single emergent behavior, that is what you get. For example, let's take the board game of Monopoly, in which you can move around, that being a mechanic, and also you can purchase tiles that you step onto if they're not already taken, that also being a mechanic. Combining these two together gives you one of the core dynamics of Monopoly, that being territorial acquisition. You're able to do that because you can move around the playing board and you can acquire the individual pieces. While still looking at Monopoly, let's try two different mechanics. You can keep money, you can manage it, you can put some out there if you're buying something, or you can acquire some if an opponent steps onto a tile that you own. And on that same note, you can own tiles, you can sell them, or you can purchase new ones. Now putting these two together, you can get resource management as another dynamic. Of course, a single mechanic can also contribute to multiple dynamics, but in general a game will have around two core dynamics with possibly a few others acting as supports. 
Now with mechanics and dynamics out of the way, let's tackle the final piece, that being the aesthetics or the emotional response a game is supposed to be eliciting to the players. And I'm sure you can understand how this is directly tied to the dynamics that we just discussed. Now my favorite way to break this down is the so-called 8 kinds of fun and I've already discussed these in a previous video, but these kinds are simply a way to break the aesthetics down into individual responses your game dynamics might be eliciting from the player. These would break down into sensation, these being the emotions that are evoked in the player, especially regarding fear, stress, joy or happiness, which is absolutely crucial for heavily atmospheric games or, of course, horror games. Then fantasy, how much the game is able to work the player into its world and give them the tools to fulfill their fantasy, for example being the ultimate powerhouse in Doom. The third one being narrative and game telling an interesting and touching story that the player is really interested in discovering and figuring out how it ends, for example in The Last of Us, then challenge, game acting as an obstacle course giving you puzzles, giving you different tricks and traps that you need to learn to avoid, as in for example Portal, then fellowship, with the game acting as a social framework, you being able to play with your friends and accomplish tasks together, tightening your bonds and friendships. Discovery, extremely common in huge open world RPG games which allow you to simply wander and uncover new and exciting things that perhaps no one else has ever seen, such as in No Man's Sky, well at least the way it was intended. Then expression, very common in open world sandbox games such as Minecraft for example, where you're able to simply use the tools given to express yourself and create whatever you want. This also ties in pretty closely with character creation in many games. And finally, submission, and that's the feeling you get from successfully farming or grinding or simply putting time in that almost feels like work that will in the end give you some sort of a satisfying result. So what do all of these mean? Well, they simply tie back to the dynamics and mechanics you want your game to possess. You need to understand that the way the MDA framework works is that the mechanics directly create dynamics which directly create aesthetics. The tough part about this is that you as a game designer are only really able to change the mechanics. That's why you need to clearly understand these connections and know which mechanics will yield which dynamics which in turn will elicit what feelings from the players. This is why it can be such an issue if for example a horror game isn't scary enough because you can't directly create scariness by simply changing how the player feels. You have to go back to the absolute basis of the game and rethink how the mechanics are interlocked together into what dynamics and how that translates into what the player actually feels. Now of course the MD model is only one of multiple ways of breaking down a game into separate parts. It is in my opinion however one that is probably the most useful or has been the most useful to me as if you finish it and you break it down onto a sheet of paper or into a word document you can start seeing what type of response and what type of experience a player will have with your game before you've even put anything together that would be playable. Now of course I don't recommend doing this as your sole basis for what type of player experience you want to get, make sure you do a lot of testing as well, but it can be a useful tool if you're running on tight budget and you need to get some designs out quick for your team to be able to start working. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, that is about all I had to say about the MDA framework. You can go a little bit more in depth, but I simply picked the things that I thought would be interesting for you guys. If you want to do a self-exercise in the home, simply pick your favorite game that you like to play a lot and simply try breaking it down into the MDA model. What type of emotions does it elicit from you? How are these emotions created by dynamics? And which mechanics are there in place to support those dynamics? If there's anything you disagreed with or anything you thought that should be added, make sure to leave it down there as well. I would like to start an interesting discussion with you. If you enjoyed the video, maybe consider leaving a like, commenting or subscribing. All of those would be very much appreciated. I want to thank you all for watching and I'm going to see you in whatever next video I make. Bye bye.